What would the world look like if people felt like they mattered? Welcome to the Lead with Love podcast, exploring what it means to lead with love in business and life. I'm your host, Jada Selner, and in this show, I'll share meaningful conversations to help you, the creative, the entrepreneur, the world changer, reach more people, go after your dreams, and serve your community with love. I appreciate you joining me. Now let's get cozy and start today's episode. This week's episode is a recording of my very first keynote talk at Chris Gilbo's World Domination Summit, where I speak in front of 3,000 people and I get really real. So I kicked off my keynote with a very personal spoken word poem that I wrote in celebration of finding true love in life, but not without some adversity, lessons, and challenges along the way. It's my truth and my story as a married female business owner of color with a young daughter by my side, big dreams, and a whole lot of ambition. So in this episode, I share my rocky and honest journey as an entrepreneur, plus I share five simple strategies I use to grow the company I co-founded, Simple Green Smoothies, where I helped grow our community to over 400,000 Instagram followers, over 300,000 Facebook fans, and 355,000 email subscribers. And I did this by leading with love and service first and allowing the numbers to follow. So what you'll hear in this episode, I'll talk about why building a business is a lot like a relationship and three things that have helped me and will also help you find the perfect match in love and business and also the moment that I realized something had to change in my life and what I decided to do about it. Now, if you want the full show notes, definitely go to jadaselner.com forward slash 107. And if this story resonates with you and you think a friend in your life could benefit from it, then I encourage you to share this episode with a friend. I don't think that there are many entrepreneurs that talk about the behind the scenes of when it gets really messy in relationships, and I really put it all out on the table in this one. So I'm happy to share this keynote presentation that I did with you today. So enjoy. I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. Worthless? No. But believe me, I know what hurt is. Urban Brady Bunch breaks in a beaten, broken home. Mother stays close, father's destination unknown. I have cried all of my tears after having parents in my life for 16 years. I make love to a man with a wife and two kids. The average age of men fathering a minor is 25. At age 16, I still let him take a dive. He never wore a lid, I would soon rid his third. High school dropout, that's absurd. I don't wanna be like my mommy and be a teenage mommy. So I decided to move away and leave my puppy love stray. The next time we play, He will be intoxicated. He hated me in his every tequila breath. When he had nothing left to say, he would lay his hands on me. Not the first time I've been hit, see. A man has done this to me before. I don't speak to my first love or my father anymore. But I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. Same situation in round number two. I'm just two years older, but more hesitation, I still pursue the 10 years older married man with a child. Me in denial, I was just his friend. I won't repeat the past again. Then he slowly moves into my apartment, never pays rent, manages to have my every saving spent. We went from town home to couch room, sleeping on other people's floors or whoever would open their doors to us. I finally left him so that there was no more us and I moved into a Hollywood single. But I didn't want to be single. 
So we decided to make our love work. I decided to work two jobs, he decided to work two jobs, only one job paid him in paychecks, the other unprotected sex. Young girls who date older men are 60% more likely to contract an STD. I thought our contract was monogamy, but I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. And if life's lessons are inevitable, then my ex cheating on me and my ex ex beating on me was worth us meeting now. Because I know how to appreciate every ounce of your affection and I know that a man's arms were not meant for hitting but made for protection. And I thank you for unveiling your mask because that is all true love ever asks. They say the average person lives 20,555 days. I will love you 20,550 days plus eternity because when you leave this earth, you will return to me. I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. Worthless? No. But believe me, I know what hurt is. I'm gonna run out of time, no more clapping, okay. <laughs> I actually wrote that poem 10 years ago on May 26, 2004, and I was just 21 years old. And what I've learned is that building a business is a lot like a relationship, filled with hope for the future, followed by failed expectations, and sometimes ending in broken hearts and broken dreams. And just like my relationships and love, the same is true in business. I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. And I believe that we can use our failures as building blocks to something greater and better. And so that guy in the poem that I wanted to spend 20,555 days with, well, last Thursday, we celebrated our nine-year wedding anniversary. We got Mauied, and a couple years later, I got knocked up. <laughs> and today, we have a beautiful seven-year-old daughter named Zoe. <laughs> I also have the coolest job in the world. I get people to fall in love with kale and spinach, <laughs> including my daughter. I am the co-founder of simplegreensmoothies.com, and we get people hooked on the green smoothie lifestyle. And what started as my own healthy obsession has transformed into a world-changing business helping nearly one million people say yes to their health. So right now, I wanna tell you everything because I absolutely love to serve. Also, my brain is like a rave. <laughs> I have idea light bulbs flashing in my head nonstop. It's like, but we only have so much time together. So I want to share with you three things that have helped me and will help you find the perfect match in love and business. Number one, say your dreams out loud. Number two, take imperfect action. Number three, let go. And so what I want is this. I want to show up in the world full of energy, ready to play, and dream like a child with no fear. But here's the problem. We have this world full of dreamers and doers ready to make a difference and change the world. But as adults, we become busy and we have more responsibilities, and we start creating this divide between dreaming and doing, between thinking and taking action. And what we need to do 
is dream a better world and take imperfect action toward that dream every single day. There was this research study by psychologist Ari Kuglansky and Tori Higgins, and they say that we have two complementary motivational systems, the thinking system and the doing system. And they say that we're only capable of doing one at a time. And so what I started to notice is there's this spectrum that we all fall on between dreaming and doing. I am more dreamer than doer. I'm more starter than finisher. I can come up with ideas all day long, but follow through and execution and actually doing the work is actually really hard for me. I remember when Pinkberry, the frozen yogurt shop, it opened up in Los Angeles, and I was standing in this long line wrapped around the building. And I'd never started a business before, but my entrepreneurial brain kicked in, and I just started doing the math of like how many people were standing in line, how many people were eating their frozen yogurt, how much did frozen yogurt cost, what hours were they open, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. I was like, frozen yogurt shops make a lot of money. Wouldn't it be a great idea if I opened up my own frozen yogurt shop? So I went home and I started thinking of names. I went online and I reserved the domain, I bought the domain, thegreenswirl.com. And then I even bought an LLC. But that was as far as that business ever got. And <laughs> I'm curious how many of you have done that before? Come up with a brilliant business idea and then a rock star business name and then you go online, see if the domain is available and then you buy that domain. <laughs> Now if you are guilty of squatting on 10 or more domain names, <laughs> You are probably a dreamer like me. I totally see you over there. <laughs> and as dreamers, we have a million ideas, but no strategy or focus to actually get anything done. And then we have doers who know how to get things done, but they don't have any clear vision or roadmap of where they want to go in their future. And so they both get stuck. And what I want to know is how do vision boards and spreadsheets live together. <laughs> How does the visionary and the action taker make the world a better place? That's what I want to talk about today. I want to know how do we awaken the dreamer and the doer inside of all of us? How do we create harmony between the dreamer and doer inside of all of us? So that's why I want to talk about dreaming and saying your dreams out loud. Now, why are we afraid to dream? I was talking to my husband this week, and he said, dreams are for kids. And that made me really sad. But I get it. I'm afraid to dream because I feel like I'm not enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't know enough people. And then I feel guilty for wanting more, like what I already have isn't enough. And I start getting scared, and I don't want to share my dreams with other people and I feel alone. And if you've ever felt alone, I want you to take a moment right now and look around you. You are not alone. This is your soul tribe and it is safe to dream here. <laughs> But I personally know how painful it can be to dream when what you're wanting doesn't seem possible. So I want to give you a little background. Here's what my life looked like just two and a half years ago. So it's New Year's Day, January 1st, 2012, and my husband and I are creating our first vision board. And <laughs> we're listening to Tony Robbins' Awaken the Giant Within. And at this time, my daughter was four years old, and we just moved out of my in-law's house. And in order to move out of my in-law's house, we actually had to borrow $2,000 from a friend in order to have a rental deposit. My mom had to co-sign our apartment lease because our credit sucked. We had over $41,000 in credit card debt. We had no health insurance. My husband and I, neither of us had a college degree to fall back on. So all odds were stacked against us. And my husband was working crazy long hours, nights and weekends, and he was so stressed out because all he wanted to do was spend time with his family. And I was working two part-time jobs while taking care of our daughter, 
and just feeling like trying to squeeze in this dream business on the side. And it was really difficult. And so what I started to do was realizing that working these part-time jobs was kind of stressing us out. I remember one day, I was on my way to my part-time job. I was actually a front desk receptionist at a boutique yoga studio called Bloom Retreat. And I was on my way to work, and I get in my car, and I start my car and realize I have no gas in my car. And so I have to pick up the phone and call my boss and say, I'm so sorry, but I can't come into work today. I don't have enough money to get to work. And at that moment, we knew something had to change because we were tired of insufficient funds. We were tired of living paycheck to paycheck. But we had to get clear on how we were approaching our dreams. So here we are on New Year's Day, and Tony Robbins says, if you can have anything in the world, what would it be? <laughs> Write it down. Press pause now. <laughs> And so my husband and I were sitting on our living room floor, we're surrounded by magazine cutouts of inspiring words, beautiful homes, fancy cars, dream vacations in Tahiti, and we're just like thinking, how could this ever be possible? It was so hard to imagine that we could have what we really want. So we look at the vision board, we look at each other, and then we just start crafting. That's when you're laughing and crying because it's so sad that it hurts. <laughs> so bad that it's so funny. <laughs> and at this time, it was so hard for us to dream big. I remember saying to my husband this night, I was like, all I want is a car that's not a hoopty and won't break down on us. But Tony was telling us to dream big. So I pushed myself. And I wrote $30,000 a month on my business card. $15,000 from my business partner, Jen, and her family, and $15,000 a month for my family. And honestly, when I wrote this down, I didn't believe it. But I posted it on my vision board anyways. And when you say your dreams out loud, it allows your subconscious mind and the people around you to know that you're serious about making it a reality, even if it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. I encourage you to do it. And so I want to tell you that 18 months after I posted that card on my vision board, we made that number happen with Simple Green Smoothies. And the beautiful thing about our business is that every dollar that we make means someone said yes to their health. And so I want to tell you how we got there. How did we get to this, where we are today? But first, I really have to keep it real with you and tell you that it took a whole lot of imperfect action and a few failed businesses to get there. So taking imperfect action, I want to tell you that I started three businesses in the last five years. And every time I start a new business or a new project, I am scared of putting myself out there. But the only way to move through that fear is to take imperfect action. So business number one. My husband and I had no college degrees, no business knowledge, but we started a brick and mortar business in Kauai called Little Sprouts Playhouse, July 2009. And all we wanted was a business where we could have our daughter by our side. But I honestly don't know what I was thinking in creating a preschool program where we multiply our toddler daughter by 16. <laughs> but we did it anyways. And what happened is we started getting really stressed out. We were wearing a lot of different hats, playing accountant, business owner, marketer. I was playing boss to my husband, which was really not a healthy thing for our relationship. I mean, Things got so bad, like we were burning out, we were fighting over money that we didn't have, and there was one time where I was asking my husband, I just said, you know, I'm tired of making decisions for this family, and I really need you to lead. And I remember that hurt him so bad, but these fights were happening over and over again, and anyone who knows me knows that we are like lovers, not fighters, but things got rough. Like there was one night where he like jumped 
on the car windshield because I was so angry and I wanted to drive away in his boxers in the middle of the night. (laughs) So I believe that that was a sign that we were burning out. (laughs) And I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. So what I learned in that business is that anything that compromises your health and your relationships is not a sustainable business. And so my worst case scenario came true. We had to close this business down, and my business failed. And the sucky part was we were in the same place. We were still broke, still in debt, no health insurance. And not only that, but I was so stressed out that I gained over 25 pounds, and I had no energy. And so what I did to take back control of my health and my life, because I felt like I had no control of my life at this time, was I started one simple habit, and that was drinking green smoothies every day. And in a short amount of time, within three months, I lost 27 pounds. And this gave me the energy and the confidence to start business number two. So in the summer of 2011, I contacted my friend Jen Hansard. We were in a mom's group together, and I just asked her if she would design a logo for me. And she hooked me up with a friend discount of $75. And what happened was we started having passionate conversations about changing the world and parenting and eco-friendly living. We were sharing our cross-country moves. She had just moved from California to Florida, and I had just moved from Kauai to California. And so through a super legit email, 3,000 miles away, we decided to become business partners. (laughs) And with a whole lot of heart and hustle and way too much caffeine, we launched our parenting blog website, familysponge.com. And so with this business, we were just trying to make money online. You know, like we had guest posts, we'd write blog posts where we had affiliate links sprinkled in like every other sentence hoping that we'd make some money, but that didn't work. (laughs) Also, at this time, I mean, almost a year into our business, where the people that were commenting on our site was Joy Jonah, the one that's saying, love this, that's my mom. (laughs) Alex is my 30-something-year-old cousin. He's male, like, and commenting on a parenting side with no kids. (laughs) And like I say, I encounter every lesson in life on purpose. So what I learned in this business is that we all have to start at zero. Whether that's zero followers, zero email subscribers, zero money in your bank account, we all start at zero. And Jen and I were really struggling financially and we were trying to make more money. And my husband was like, he wanted to quit his job and he's like, when's it gonna happen? And everyone who starts a blog, you think that you're gonna start making millions of dollars in like six months. And that wasn't happening. But there was something inside me that knew I had it in me to build a business that I love. And I told my husband that I needed a little space. I said, I'm studying, I'm figuring this whole online thing out. I just need a little bit more time. I don't know how it's gonna happen, and I don't know when it's gonna happen, but just give me time. And so, we started business number three, Simple Green Smoothies. In July 2012, we actually started an Instagram account called Simple Green Smoothies. And honestly, this was never supposed to be a business. It was never supposed to be its own website. One of my friends was just like, hey, you know those green smoothie recipes you're sharing on Family Sponge, why don't you share it on Instagram? People love health and fitness on there. And I don't know how many of you have a blog, but every time a new social media platform comes out, like I cringe. You know, when you're bootstrapping a business, you don't have the time and the energy and resources to do one more thing. But we did it anyways. And the one thing that we almost didn't do was the kickstart to growing this amazing community of rock stars. And so what I want to share with you (laughs) is five rules to building your community with heart. And I think that's the difference in being a world changer is you actually care about the people you're serving. And so I want to start with rule number one. Take consistent, ninja-focused action. (laughs) So Instagram, all we had was Instagram. We didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have Pinterest, we didn't even have a website. 
And what we learned from taking ninja focused action on just geeking out on Instagram for like three months, I had frantic fingers. All I was doing was like liking other people's posts and commenting on other people's posts. But that gave us the information that we needed to know if people were really into what we were sharing, which was green smoothie photos and green smoothie recipes. And within a few months after building this engagement and momentum of being ninja focused on doing nothing but Instagram, we were able to realize that, hey, you know what? People are really digging what we're saying. So we actually built a full-on website. Jen designed this beautiful website. And the thing that I noticed with businesses is they try to do everything all at the same time. And it's just so hard. You can't really have a true, authentic conversation with people in five different places. So start with one social media platform and really engage with your audience. Rule number two, stay insanely curious and see what sticks. I like to say that I throw spaghetti at the wall for a living. And what I mean by that is that there is a lot of strategy behind cooking spaghetti. So when you're boiling a pot of spaghetti, you don't take the noodle out after it's been in there for a minute and then see if it sticks. You're actually intentionally waiting, waiting for it to get soft enough until you actually think it's going to stick. So you just don't do anything. You are very strategic on the type of growth strategies that you're focusing on your business. One of the spaghetti noodles that we threw at the wall was Instagram. We had no idea it was going to take off. And then there was another spaghetti noodle that we did that didn't work. We had Google AdSense sprinkled all over our Simple Green Smoothie site. And we got an email from one of our rock star people, and they said, hey, I clicked on this ad, and it took me to a casino site. And we're like, okay, that does not work. So we took all of those ads off of our site. And then our 30-day green smoothie challenge was yet another spaghetti noodle that we were throwing, and we had no idea that anyone would sign up for a challenge. But our first green smoothie challenge that we launched on January 1st, 2013, we had over 30,000 people sign up for our first challenge. And we had no idea that was going to happen. So you just have to keep throwing those spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. And rule number three, court your community. I like to look at building a community online like dating. So your social media platform is like a dance club. Your website is like your house. And your email list is like your bedroom. And all three of those things are really important. But what I notice is that a lot of people try to use social media to drag people to their website right away with no value added in here. You need to show your people your dance moves in the dance club. <laughs> Imagine a guy comes up to a girl in a dance club and he's like, hey girl, if you wanna see my dance moves, you gotta come to my house first. <laughs> like, that doesn't work, that's actually really creepy. <laughs> And so it's so important to add value right there in your social media platform. So we include green smoothie photos, recipes, and we include the recipes right there. So we're building trust with our fans right there where they're at. We're not asking them to take another step to come hang out with us. And so it's really important to court your community. And if you want to take that courting like an extra step, what I encourage you to do is rule number four, which is create hyper-engaged connection. Now that's your date. That's the free date, okay? So a lot of people try to do the free date with like a free offer of uh, ebook. And I look at that like a fast food meal, one night stand, not cool. Now with a hyper-engaged offer is what you're doing is you're trying to engage with your community on a longer term basis and make it free. So our 30-day green smoothie challenge is like a gourmet meal. You know, we're really interacting with them. And I don't know if you've ever been on a date with a conversation that is really stale, and you kind of say something, and then the conversation ends, and then you say something, and the conversation ends, and that just sucks. What you really want to do is, even if someone was to say, hey, that recipe looks really cool, it's not a question, but keep the conversation going. So if someone says, oh, that recipe is cool, I'll respond and say, that is so awesome. Interact with your community. Show them that you care. And so rule number five, which is my absolute favorite, is to choose love over metrics. We have hundreds of thousands of email subscribers, social media platform, but we honestly, 
we look at them as like one person, that we are talking to one person, every post, every email. We know our community so well and we love them so much. And it makes it so much easier to serve when you are in love with your community. And when we focus on people over profits, people can feel that. And so there's this one thing that we started called Friday Love Notes. And one of our community happiness specialists came up to me and said, you know, I'm getting really frustrated with how the Facebook algorithm reach decreased. And he was just noticing that we would reach 100,000 people, and then it turned into like 8,000 people. And he was just like, what is the point of posting? I feel like I'm doing all this work for nothing. And I said that we are in the business of changing one person's life at a time. And so what we do now is we celebrate our community through Friday Love Notes. And so what our community happiness specialists do is at the end of the week on Friday, they compile all their favorite comments from Facebook and emails, and they send our entire Rockstar team this email of love. And so we're measuring our success through love and how people's lives are being changed through the green smoothie lifestyle. And I think that's so important. It also allows our week to end on such a happy note. And it reminds us why we're doing what we're doing. So choose love over metrics. Choose people over profits. So in my failed relationships, my failed businesses, I've learned a lot. And my life looks a lot different today. Now I get to travel the world, talk about the green smoothie lifestyle, I get to connect with people all over the world and do what I love. But more importantly to me is that I was including other people in my dreams, not just myself. I wanted freedom for my business partner, I wanted freedom for my husband. Last year, my husband actually quit his job and he is now spending more time than ever with our daughter. They actually have summer school in the summer. It's like fake summer school where they just like do stuff at home. <laughs> and he also, this month, he just recorded his first full-length children's music album. And that just makes my heart so freaking happy. <laughs> And with Simple Green Smoothies, we've had nearly one million people sign up for our free 30-day green smoothie challenge. And in result to that, we've sold over 10,000 products where people are saying yes to their health in just a little under two years. And so I talked to you about saying your dreams out loud. And I've talked about taking imperfect action. But the last thing that I want to share, and it's the most important and kind of the hardest thing to do, is to let go. It is so hard to let go. I love what my friend and meditation mentor said, Christopher Carter. He said, letting go is hard, but holding on <laughs> is like falling on water skis and being dragged around the lake. <laughs> so recently, I let go and I got rid of my binder babies. Now my binder babies are boxes full of binders, notebooks, journals, curriculums of like business ideas and dreams, and I got rid of them. I tossed them in the recycling bin. And what was happening was they were taking up so much mental space in my world and I just needed to like let it go and release it. And so one thing I wanna say before I wrap up is that my daughter, when she plays with balloons, it brings us, her so much joy in the moment. And whenever she gets a balloon, we tie it around her wrist and we see if it will float away and then it's fine. And so she's playing with it and she's super happy. And then she does what every child ends up doing. She figures out a way to untie it from her wrist and then she's like reaching and then she lets go. And there's so much sadness and frustration in her eyes that she lost her balloon. But then something else happens. With her feet firmly planted in the ground, she looks up and joy and wonderment comes back into her eyes as the balloon gets smaller and smaller. And I think dreams are a lot like balloons. They bring us so much joy in the moment 
and we hold on, and then we reach and we let go. We have to be willing to let go. Let go of the outcome. Let go of how it will happen. Let go of when it will happen. And I'm standing here today because I am proof that your dreams matter and that it takes time. So I wanna give you an opportunity right now to stand up for your dreams. And so, if you are ready to dream a better world and take imperfect action toward that dream every single day, I invite you to stand up with me because this is for the dreamers, the ones who say their dreams out loud even if it's just a whisper. If that's you, stand up. This is for the difference makers and the imperfect action takers, stand. This is for the doers, idea hackers, movement starters, answer seekers, stand up. This is for the freedom chasers, the ones who choose their own path, using failures as building blocks to something greater and better. This is for the visionaries, the world leaders, the movement makers, and the shakers. If that's you, stand up and dream a better world. Choose people over profits. Choose peace over chaos. Choose faith over fear. This is for the dream builders who choose love. If you encounter every lesson in life on purpose, stand up. Thank you. Thank you so much for your heart and attention in listening to Lead With Love. If this message, Leading With Love, and life and business, and remembering the humans and beating hearts behind the numbers and all of that good stuff, I would love for you to take the time to leave an honest review. It would mean the world to me and it also helps more people find out about the goodness and helping spreading more love in the world, which we really, really need. So I would really appreciate that and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.